Hi, welcome to this new video tutorial. Today you are going to see how you can build a chat application using Spring Boot, WebSocket and Angular JS. So I did try to find some uh, exact tutorial online but I didn't find it which implement this exact stack. And uh, yeah, so uh, some extra documentation will be found here. Uh, I use some concept from this uh, Spring uh, Spring uh, Boot WebSocket uh, documentations, and of course, yeah, some uh, channels like this one from Bo Ali Ali, which uh, is uh, some concept here, and also from this uh, channels here, Java Tech Solutions and involving innovations here. But some are here, they build it uh, using uh, pure JavaScript and so on, but it was not based on Angular. And uh, that's why I tried to set this a new tutorial because I thought this might be useful for some of you out there. So uh, when it comes to this stack here, it's important to know how evil blocks uh, 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 links together so let's say for example like uh, to understand the stack we have here you want to build a real-time uh, application so we may we may will need a server and then also we will need also at least one client or more that will be uh, getting resources exchange resources uh, through the server between them so at the bottom here you can just consider like we have our tcp which is our base uh, protocol so one single uh, tcp connection is enough for the web socket to run on so we have here our web socket which is running on top of uh, the TCP connections here is our web sockets and then this one provides a full deflex and bidirectional communications channel so then but uh, it's a specifications here and then we need to make use of stomp here stomp itself has uh, the broker implementation of the broker and uh, when we say broker then we uh, we can make use of subscriptions and message broadcasting so here is our stomp here so stomp come here with the broker implementation that is used by our web uh, about uh, by our web socket protocol so, and then at last year we have the sock gs here we somehow uh a web socket like API implementations but using uh, JavaScript is using the JavaScript uh, uh, as a library so then you ask again it may ask a question like okay what will be the usefulness of it so this one come into play when uh, we are in environments uh, where WebSocket is disabled or is blocked or whenever a uh, WebSocket is not available then uh, to ensure these fallback options then uh, this SOC GS here will be used in absence of WebSocket and this way providing a consistent and stable uh, communications for the parties involved so that is it is the big picture and we can also see that like we have one uh, tcp like this one and inside that one here we have our web socket and inside here we have our stomp and uh, on top on that one or inside we have our sock uh, gs so then without a further ado now let's jump into the implementations so in order to do that one now we will need uh, 
Spring Initializer. So as I mentioned, our backend will be using uh, purely Java, Spring Boot, and the WebSockets. So <coughs> here we need to specify set Java here, and then Maven. Here we set the type, uh, the versions of the Spring Boot that you want to use. And then the artifact here, we'll call it uh, Spring Boot WebSocket uh, WebSocket Angular WebSocket Angular We call it version 002 and uh, here we have jar packaging is jar and here here is uh, i'm using jdk 17 depend on yours then you may have to choose uh, the versions of the jdk that you are using and then once that one is done we need to add uh, dependencies of course we need web here uh, spring web we also need to have lombok and uh, we also need to have web socket, which come with the socket GS and stump already enabled. Uh, and then that is it. So we generate it. Then we go here to the folder. Here is that one here. And then I will go to the properties enable this for security email this one it's german here so yours will be in a different language so okay and then i have to extract it once extracted we'll copy it take this one and copy it in the directory where you want to make our development so this one is done now uh, we need now to start our favorite IDE. Right, we have our ID here. Here I use VS Code. Yours will depend. You may use like IntelliJ, NetBeans, or Eclipse, or whatever. Then now uh, let's open the folder. Let's open the folder. VS Code. Here is the one here. Yeah, that is it here. Here we open our terminal. It's ready, we enable this one. And then in order to make this backend here, we are going to structure uh, our backend in packages. First, we start with uh, the config package. And then we also need another package here called uh, controller. Uh, that is it. And then yeah, here we also create uh, our configuration class. And then it is a configuration class here. And we are going to annotate it configurations it is configurations here so that configurations here is going to implement here you're going to include the web socket broker configure interface and that interface itself has a lot of method that you may need to override, so we need to use uh, this register. We need to make use the register here to allow WebSocket uh, connections. This one will register uh, stomp endpoints to allow WebSocket connections. And then the next method that we need here 
is uh, configure this one message broker we register the storm endpoints and then we also configure the broker here we set it to public and then we mark it as overwrite uh, same things goes here public we mark it as overwrite and then inside here now we need to add, uh, set the endpoints from which uh, the angular client will connect to so the angular client will connect to this endpoint that you are setting ws so then here we also set allow origins the url of the clients connecting to this one we can set this one to star to allow everything but you only know like for security purpose is always good to restrict as much as possible http here local host for 200 this will be the default port for our angular clients and then uh, at last with WebSocket. So here we enable here uh, uh, SockGS support for fallback. So then this one will run as uh, as I mentioned alternative when uh, WebSocket is not available. So this is our fallback here endpoints allow origins from uh, uh, angular clients and then here the fallback uh, with that said now we need to configure our broker same thing uh, we need to set the prefix from which that all uh, messages coming from the client wishing to uh, be directed to the broker will use so this is the prefix register set applications destination prefix all these things here are specified in the documentation so these, these are the way that we need these are the configurations this is the configuration so nothing strange here no magic so next thing is to enable uh, the broker simple enable a simple broker for broadcasting to clients so and in order to do that according to the documentations here we have to set the name as topic it can be any other things that you want okay so this is how we just configure here our this is our configurations and uh, yeah last thing that I forgot was to enable a socket broker annotations so this one is important as this one enable our web socket message handling in Spring Boot with a simple message broker so this is very important so then once that one is done we need to now to implement uh, the listener yeah the listener and uh, we go here and create a new class that we call here web socket even listener here is the web socket even listener here and uh, we annotate it with uh, components and uh, after that one required a constructor 
and then we also need to make use of login sl4j and uh, uh, what we need to do now is uh, okay that one is done now we need to handle uh, we need to implement uh, event handlers so we need uh, what we need here we handle the disconnections so for the purpose of this tutorial here we need we will handle the disconnections for now and then we have to mark this method here as even listener And uh, how we handle this one here? Okay, when we say uh, handling disconnections here, we mean like it's important uh, uh, to make use of the messages and the users and so on. So I will take a sample code here to make the video shorter. Uh, here is what we have now. We have this uh, stomp header accessors here. This is used to inform uh, other users. Uh, this is uh, used to listen to another, even create another method with even and blah blah blah. So, and uh, so. These accessors here, we take the events here, and inside the events here, we try to extract the message. Once the message is extracted, then uh, we need to define the message now and the type. So before moving further, we come to the controller here and come back to this one later. So I'll, I will come here and create a new class. Uh, web chat message web uh, web socket chat message and then I will will also need uh, an enum enumerations here and uh, we call it web chat message type right uh, that is it and uh, for the type of messages that we'll need someone will be able to join the chat someone will be able to leave the chat and someone will be able to chat uh, that is it and then here when we come in the message itself the message uh, objects here will contain uh, the sender name that we call sender it will also contain a private here string content and then it will also contain uh, the web socket message type you also contain the type uh, that is it we can move on with date and so on and blah blah but we stop at this level now so then if we come back here now we can include And here we have a pass message to the broker specific topic. In order to uh, pass the message here, we we'll need uh, the sending operations. And uh, we have to
So we need to define this simple message sending operations here. Uh, uh, that is it in so builder here is missing in the message message is not finished here so we need to add some uh, in the message we need to add the getter setters for the message objects so that's why we are getting that arrow getter setter all constructor no argument constructor and then builder and we can see that okay it is okay now so here we grab the event if you want to disconnect or when it's connected what we do uh, we grab the events and from the event we extract the message and then from the message we extract uh, the names right username and then we try to check here if it's not null it's not null we lock the username to inform in the console to yeah we lock it in the console that the user is disconnected and we print the usernames then here uh, we build the message at the sender at the type of message is leaving the user is leaving then we build it as an object and then we pass it to to the broker using this uh, using simple uh, message sending operations so that's what is done here mm -hmm. then next now uh, last thing that we need to do now is to implement uh, the controller and then we need to create another class that we call WebSocket controller class WebSocket uh, keep the same format shot controller uh, uh, that's one here we are going to annotate it with controller and then and as before we have to handle two things we have to handle uh, incoming messages we have to handle the messages and then we also have to handle users uh, join or leaving the yeah the chat room so we need to add to add users to the websocket sessions so in order to do that now okay we need another boilerplate code here So here we map the message here, we map the message here to the socket uh, destinations and then we specify uh, the return message will be sent to this uh, topic. And yeah, here is the payload. Here we add this message as a payload and then we are going to return the message to all uh, subscribers. Here we are logging uh, this one for we log this one in the console, we extract the sender and the message content. Each time that we receive a message, then we display it in the console. Same things goes here with uh, users. Uh, whenever we add a user, then same thing we map the user to the socket destination we map a uh, message here to socket destinations here using this shot uh, dot at users and then we also specify that uh, we, we specify that uh, the return message will be sent to top 
uh, to topic chat here. We have different topic here, public here for the messages here, and this one for users uh, joining uh, the chat room. And then here we store the username in the WebSocket uh, sessions attributes. That's what we did here. Grab this one, usernames, and send it. We log it, user joined, and then we broadcast it to all users through uh, the topic. So that is uh, what is done. And then once this one is done here, our backend is ready. So Maven clean. Install. So we don't have uh, really not much code here. What is good with this WebSocket stuff? You just need to, yeah, configure our broker and then do some even handling stuff, and it's okay. Then uh, Maven. Maven Spring Boot Run What is the problem now? Oh, Spring B, it's Spring Boot, sorry. Okay. Definitely here. Spring Boot Run. Okay, then it's okay now. Our broker is running. The back end with our broker is running here. On the, uh, the port, it should be the port 8080. Yeah with the default uh, context path slash. So uh, backend is ready now. We need to move to our front end and we make use of Angular. I hope that you already have Angular installed. If not, uh, install it. Here is the version that I have here is 18.27 with Node.js and uh, yeah, that's essential stuff. Then now we need to create a new project. So it is uh, ng new. I will call this uh, front end. And here uh, we take the default CSS. Do we have one to enable server side rendering? No. And it's installing, it's creating. And what you can see here now, we are creating uh, the front end here in the same folder, just but you can create it in the different locations. So we put it here in our folder, Spring Boot folder. It is been done. So while waiting for that to start, can we do anything in parallel? Okay, then uh, ng build. This command is not ah okay. We have to move to the front end. Sorry, front end ng build. Uh, we just uh, this try to do this one to make sure everything is working. 
okay it is built uh, successfully that is okay now uh, next thing that we need to do now is to create a uh, is to create our service here so we also need to create ng generate service uh, services slash web socket and then here we are creating Here is our service. Here is our service here, which is generated. And then if we go here inside uh, main components here, we need now to start organizing ourselves uh, how to see the structure of uh, the front end code. Uh, it is okay. And so so, and uh, what we do is when uh, this component is initialized here on init, yeah, on init here, blah. so here is on init method, which will be called each time here the component is initialized, we have this one. And uh, so when it's initialized here, we just lock this one in the console and then after that one, we also need uh, a method to connect. Also need connect method. Uh, we also need to send a message. send a message and then we also need here to manage uh, the color of our front end avatar uh, we call that get avatar color Uh, that's all it and then uh, because we are going to do it on uh, sender name our avatar will be from uh, with we are going to have a circle beside uh, uh, the username we take uh, the first letter of the username so we need uh, the username because we need that first letter to create the avatar. Uh, return type. So we take a string and we return a string. That is it. And in the other side here, here is our web service. And uh, Okay, we need to inject this uh, WebSocket service. Sorry, we have to in we need to inject this WebSocket service here in the component to make use of it. So we do this one through uh, the constructor, right? We have a constructor here, private. Web socket service column web socket service we 
we have this one here and of course uh, when the constructor is called here we also need to lock that right we need to lock that here We need to lock that and uh, with this one let's first start and make sure that everything is running. So we build again. And then we go to ngsafe. Okay, it's running. And then if we move here on port uh, local OS here 4200 you can see that is there and if you go to the console by right clicking go to that inspect we can see that here the app, uh, app component constructor is called then and then after the constructor then we have the init which is called and then everything is running as expected that's good so now then uh, we are going to continue now with uh, implementing uh, our service socket service and uh, in order to do that one now uh, we need to keep us we keep in track of uh, the message and the connection status we need to keep track of the message and the connection status that one so here is first here by using this uh, we make this service available uh, provide provided in root by providing this one in the root we make this uh, web service available throughout the applications as a single ton service that's very important only one instance of the service will be available throughout the applications life cycle and then here we set uh, oh storm client so the client is missing storm client is missing and um, hmm. what we have to do is to stop this one i forgot this uh, one but not yet late so after creating the projects here it's important that we create os we install also uh, the sock gs client package npm package so for that one we have we write npm install save type socket client it's installed we also install uh, after this type we also install socket client okay five packages added and then uh, we have to install stomp and then once this one is installed here we need to come to we need to go in the angular json and allow these exceptions angular adjacents options here we need to allow this okay so clients exceptions here so that one is done so when we come back here we can now add this one and then this one also so here we are declaring two observables here one for the message and then one for the connection status 
So this one is used in our front end. And then once the, this one is done now, uh, we need to implement uh, the connect. So same as before. So we have we have the connect here, which will take uh, the username. which will take the username here. It's there. And then we also have another method here, this sending message. Send message here, which take the username. String, and then also the content. string and the last is the disconnect we have the disconnect here and then we start with the easiest one in order to disconnect here so we just need to check we just need uh, to check if uh, the client is there if it's there then we deactivate so this is disconnections here and then now for the connections as you can see here that uh, the first thing that come into mind here will be to access the storm client and then activate right we have to activate here then we have activate and then uh, of course we need to uh, We need to connect, we need to subscribe, and then we need also to push push method to the broker once uh, the connection is, is during the connections, and also we also need to monitor the errors. So all these things here should be done before the activations here. And uh, as you can see, uh, so here we set uh, the socket initialize uh, the SOC uh, GS WebSocket connections to the server using uh, the port, the URL in which uh, the backend is running, and then this uh, WS. If you remember here in the backend. In the back end, if you go to the configurations, how we configure our broker, you can see that it's the first thing that we at the end point here from where uh, this Angular was going to connect. So you are specifying that one here, and then we configure the stop uh, stomp client with connections details here after uh, five seconds here. If the connection is lost here, yeah, it's going to reconnect. So the fallback, and then also we lock the error in the console for troubleshootings. And if it's successful here, we set uh, these uh, connections uh, status that we monitor to true, and we lock it in the server, and then we subscribe here. Message stomp client. We need to import the message here. Okay, it's ready. 
and then here we are subscribing to the topic once we connect once we connect here we connect to this topic public uh, topic is where everyone is connecting all the news users are connecting and then we also publish this one to this uh, destination that we have shown uh, the chat room right and then and uh, on error here okay when error is there then yeah we handle the error here and display it in the lock in the console and the last thing here will be uh, handling the message sending okay here so same thing here we check uh, if the client is there and uh, storm client is there and if uh, the user is connected here and then the type of the message we create a chat message objects here this is the chat message objects where we take the username that is passed here and this is how we form our chat message objects and we lock it the user will send it to the console and we publish it right yeah, we are going to publish it and remember we always use this prefix in the configurations yeah, this is the prefix that we always use in the configurations here and here and then after we add uh, the destinations and uh, if there is error here then of course we lock it in the console that we are not able to do that one so our service should be uh, ready now and the uh, service is ready now we need to move back uh, to the app components to access our service in order to access our service now it's the same thing easy busy so here so each time a message is sent right we are going to make use of Oh, we need to first uh, add some uh, attributes here that should be used here of course yeah so that is it here we access our service here we are just accessing our service here and then we push the message and same thing here with the status we set uh, we update uh, each time we receive a message here we observe we, ob uh, we update the connection status and check if the message uh, is connected or not and if it's connected we clear the message and we add it in the console and uh, after that one is done we also need to implement the connect method we are going to add this one to the connect button uh, same thing is here connect here we pass the username we are using our service here and uh, for sending the message we also need to do that here we are just sending if the message is set then if it is set here then we sent uh, the message accessing uh, the WebSocket service and the last is uh, the implementations of our avatar here is how we implement our avatar here so we have a list of colors here and then we take the lens here and take uh, the first letter composing then we create a hash based on the user names based on that uh, we are going to choose randomly 
we are going to choose uh, a color here based on the arch uh, of the username. So this is what uh, we do to generate uh, the color here. Then last and not the least is uh, the view HTML. It should be straightforward. And uh, we also need to get some CSS to style it. We have the CSS here. And uh, we have some error here. We still have some error because we use ng models and forms. So in order for that one to do, we need to add some modules here uh, commands and form module we need to add that because we use the stand alone components so we have to do that here right and once that one is done that you can see uh, first you can see div here, two div here. One is uh, if uh, is connected. If it is not connected, if the user is not connected, we are going to show. But once it's connected here, we show the chat room. So if it's not connected here, what you are going to see will be uh, this message here inviting you to join uh, the chat room. And then the button here, if you click on connect here, you are going to get connected. And uh, Of course here, then you click on connect here and then you click uh, on submit. No, sorry. Here you click on the submit start the chat. When you click start the chat, you will uh, click this uh, submit button type here. And on this one is pressed here by default, automatically here the connect method will be called. So this is what is happening here. Then, once connected here, we have this uh, new message, and then this message here is reflecting if uh, the, connect, the connections uh, uh, connection status here. If the connections exist, show uh, connecting. If a message connections exist, then you will show connectings, and. Uh, here is here we list all the messages and then here is where we are going to type the message here we type message here same as before when we type and press submit here send is called so on submit so on submit same message will be called you will take the message that we type here and then send it and then yeah, same thing, we have different type of uh, message that we track here. And uh, we have our CSS. Uh, this one should be there. Now, if we go back. So we are we are now having a new error here. Uh, this uh, global uh, is not defined. Global is not defined. In order to solve this uh, error here, in order to solve this error here, we need to install uh, the global uh, pro global and process packages. We need to install the global and process packages. So this is a new package, NPM package that we install. Let's close this one, install it. Okay, it is installed and then on that one is installed. Uh, we need to add a uh, we need to do a couple of things in in package here 
in package.json in package.json we need to add uh, this browser we are adding the browser here with global and process here we have it which is installed which is added and then in the new versions of angular here unfortunately here we don't have the polyfill so we have to create it by manually so it's what we have to do we create that uh, polyfills we create the polyfills files here polyfills.ts typescript file we have created that We have created that one here. It is there and then we can also come here in the beginning of main file right, and add this one here. So on this one is see we also need to set this part here. So in order to do we need to as you know in Angular when we add a new file which is not part of the default configurations here. We also need to specify that to let uh, the framework know that uh, it is added. So it is it should be on the TS config here. We come here. Oh, it is on the two uh, brackets. And then it's not finished, we also need to come here and specify it. So it is done. Right, and uh, I hope that is okay now. Okay. It is still running the backend ng build. Okay, and uh, we have new error like the budget has been exceeded and then the warning in order to solve this one here, we come again uh, back to Angular, JSON. Here we move this one to 5K, here 5K. Okay, it's gone. And you save. It's running. Congrat Yo, you can see congratulations here. Our app is running. As you can all see here, our app is running. And then if we type a message like, I type like Mumi. Okay, Mumi join the app here and then um, what is there in you can see here user uh, joined mummy joins so it is okay it's, it's going as expected and then I also need to create another instance Local OS here. Right, we have. Let's go this way. Uh, John. Like John and Mumi, we have John 
also join the shot and then join say hi mommy and then hi john how are you doing so you can see that everything is working here as expected here our shot applications is running uh, as expected and then also if uh, we go here and then we can see the message here the message are coming everything is locked here in the messages so if i refresh it everything is gone so it's something something that we are going to check in the next uh, video right so we are going to see that in the next video uh, we can improve this one and persist uh, the messages and so on so that's it and uh, our applications is uh, here is our shot applications and yeah i hope that this uh, video is useful to you and uh, i intended to do this one this is how you can connect uh, this is how you connect uh, WebSocket, uh, Spring Boot, and uh, Spring Boot together. WebSocket, uh, Spring Boot, Angular together and let them work. So, yeah, it's been long. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's a short application. We can even add a third one that user you can see oh John left you can see the message from this one and yeah so if this guy left leave again so you can see the left here we also need to uh, implement join when someone join we also need to show the message that join and so on so yeah this is the video here i will also put the source code available in the git directory that i will add in the descriptions link will be in the descriptions so and uh, stay tuned and play around it and sometime you may find that uh, busy like sometime you may find that um, Uh, the stuff is some error may, may come up and uh, what I only recommend is that if you have happen to have uh, some error starting uh, client here please come here and come to this uh, folder here and delete the cache inside right inside here if I click You will come here to this angular here and delete this cache if you try to start and notice that it said it's busy the client is busy or whatever you may close everything close your ide and come and delete this cache and after that one is it should run uh, it should run uh, as expected without any issue so bye